Hello and welcome to the regulars. How is Hi. everyone doing? Hello, hello. Hold on, I'm just putting this. There we go. Hold on. And yes. I'm Jason DeRoss. Hello, welcome to the regulars. I'm Stacey McGonigal. <laughs> And I, Jason Duran. Yay, we did it officially. Sorry, I thought I had my little recording button going, and guess what? I didn't press it. It's Friday. Hello, yeah, hello. Yeah, we did it. We made the first first week. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. I'm I'm obsessed. I am. Can you believe we've done this for a full week? I, I'm ready to celebrate. Are you? Well, Jason needs yeah. a second. I hope everyone is well. Hi, Claire. Welcome to the chat. Um, I just need a second for this. Hello, everyone. Caitlin, hello. Oh, yes. And I have a classic Ooh. Canadian. Cesar. Because this is still a podcast and some people aren't seeing this visually. I'm popping some champagne. We're popping some champagne. Um, I have got my little, uh, you know, Canadian Caesar. Um, and I'm just like raring and ready to go. Look at this. It's Friday, baby. I don't know if you can see it in the <laughs> chat, Jason, but I made a little uh, picture for us. <laughs> <gasps> Yay! It's Friday. <laughs> Woo! Ah, it worked. Oh God, I thought that was going to be harder than it was. Well, I'm so, waiting for you God. to get it all set up. Cheer. Okay. Oh my God. Look at no I'm a child. I'm a child with parents that drink. <laughs> this is champagne. I love that you need to pour it in frame. This is what I love. Well, I also noticed that I'm just like we. I realized we don't have any like flutes or any champagne glasses or oh anything. i don't know if it's you can just... see this this is from the dollar store and it's... sure it's got a christmas tree on your glass Christmas tree well we're getting festive on this friday cheers my friends cheers. to everyone in the chat to my best pal jay cheers we made it to friday this champagne's been in our fridge for years oh wow spicy mm. oh my god <laughs> oh. Wow. i don't need this anymore i don't need the soda stream stuff because i got bubbles i got real bubbles oh yeah Amazing. Amanda, first time watching you guys this live, and I already have a huge smile. Welcome, Amanda. We're Yay. so glad that you're here. Welcome. Oh, my gosh. What a time it has been, Jay. What a week. Yeah, fun times. Oh, Kelsey. Wants it's it's weird, like, how this is bringing people together. It's um, So I live in a little sort of, like, it's not really a gated community, but it's this place in Los Angeles that has, it's, it's 4,200 units. It's whatever. Uh, and I opened my door today and I kind of stood in this little like townhouse and I'm just standing at the front door uh, because I was like, I just need to be outside for a second. I'm kind of just standing in my doorway and okay. I had three people walk by and all of them were like, morning. Really? Like, everybody's dying for like just contact with people. Please, please. <laughs> <laughs> like one guy yelled it from, he was a street and a half away and he saw me at the front door and he was like, Hey, morning. <laughs> really? Yeah. Weird. We're living a surreal life. Like this is, um, it's creating pieces, which I didn't even realize it was doing. It's creating peace on earth. We, oh, I thought you meant you and I are creating peace on earth, which I the mean. The coronavirus is creating peace on earth. I don't think that it is. And I don't think we can say <laughs> that. And, and we won't absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, I simply and utterly cannot. Um, I'm so excited. Um, how is your champagne? Is it is it nice? Are we are we enjoying it? What's the whole vibe? Yeah, it's it's hey. um it's bubbly. It's beautiful. Okay. Uh, I my son halfway during this is going to be on like a Zoom chat or Zoom or Zoom whatever it is the a group chat with all yeah. of his classmates. So. When, when daddy walks out of the room after this podcast with a bottle of champagne and pantsless, it's going to be real fun for all of his kindergarten friends. Here's what's going to be fun. Daddy's going to emerge and he's going to be like, daddy was on a live stream and he had to drink champagne <laughs> at 930 <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> it's 930 in the morning here. I'm so excited for us. I did put back on some merch. Um, yeah. I had to. It's so comfortable. But here we are. Jason, I, are you watching the stream at all? Because I made us a little graphic and I'm really hoping that you can see it. Oh, it's a beautiful Friday graphic. Thank you. Thank you. Um, oh, when times were easy and young. I don't think we were that, we weren't that young in that photo. What are you talking about? That was like three years ago. <laughs> oh my God. Someone said, are we calling Jason daddy now? 
Absolutely no. not. No, <laughs> no, no. Caitlin, I love you, but I hope not. I no. Hope not. The thing about it is we can't sexualize either of us in any capacity. Never. <laughs> we will implode. <laughs> you have to picture us like Barbie and Ken dolls, but like they're neighbors. They're neighbors. We've like, always said like that. We have all the part, the, the, the body parts of like a Barbie, except they're just expanded. Yeah. I also We're think. We're Barbie and Ken if you put them in the microwave for a minute. I was just going to say that. <laughs> I was actually just going to say that. Um, I was going to say that Jason and I have sold our comedic duo ship as um, platonic life mates who have never touched. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, it's weird that I have a child. Let's be honest. You know what? When you told me you guys were expecting, I was like, how? <laughs> <laughs> what did you do to get yeah. there? Was, I'm just curious. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. So um, a huge thing that happened to us yesterday is we had a lovely listener reach out to us um, because they had shared our reaction to the celebrity singing Jason's favorite song in the world. Imagine. Well, as a child, I thought it was everybody's favorite song. That well, was the problem. Yeah, you heard it and said, I, I think we're done. I think we're done. I, I honestly, there was a Toronto station at the point called like, I think it was like 680 or something like that. Or I don't know. But I was like, they're like. It was the first time I ever heard of a radio station being like, you can call in and request a song. I was like, this is bullshit. This can't, that can't be true. Cause every, we would just be listening to imagine all the time. You're telling us a story we've already heard. I know, but like for new people was, coming in, that's true. No, no, no. You're no, right. we have to, we I have mean, to welcome like we everyone. Haven't gone over the same stories many times before, but that's uh, where we are after one week. Oh no, we're not already doubling over <laughs> in stories. No, no, no. So just, no, just so, that one story. So, um, we had someone come in and slide into our DMs, which we encourage if you're not a perv. And oh, congratulations to Elizabeth for ordering an allegedly tea. We hope that it keeps you nice and comfy during these wild times. Um, and thanks to Tasha for keeping her earbuds in around her children. Oh, yeah. She's doing craft uh, time with her kids, with us. <laughs> We're trying. <laughs> and Snake King agreed with me. Corona's bringing us all together. I don't think we can say that, and I won't allow. Not on this podcast. Hi, Jan. She's in the chat, it is, too. It is, yeah, there's some terrible stuff going on in the world right now, but... Uh, uh, you think? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so um, so I, so I we got a, a message from one of our listeners, and she had posted on um, her Instagram, us reacting to celebrities singing Imagine. And yeah. Leslie Odom Jr., which I wasn't super familiar with their work but anyways they responded super talented person super talented now i've looked it up and um but the thing is us going oh my gosh and then he starts singing and we went and you went beautiful and i was like yeah so beautiful and he saw the instagram and laughed so let me tell you sometimes we forget that here on our little corner of the internet people oh, can see was us he the one that i was like is that john legend is no, that no what, no, is no. That it was the one where point? you went beautiful you just were taken by his music. I can play it for us if you'd like, but. Well, I mean, he's from Hamilton, so I imagine he's got a, a angel's voice, just a given angel's voice. Oh, he's from the musical Hamilton, not from Hamilton, Ontario. No, he's from, no. Yes, you're right. He's from the musical okay. Hamilton. Right, right, right. Adam Colley is in the chat. Adam's listening. What the heck? To what do we owe? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Adam, to the chat arenas. Adam Colley is a classic MVP of the Stump Thing and now the regulars, and we're so happy that he's here. And lovely uh, Odessa, be, um, or Odyssey, sorry. Lovely Odyssey, be careful on those three cars. Don't touch anything. Oh, right. I was just like, what are you saying to Adam? I thought it was some code language you were talking with, with Adam. I no, can't. no, no, no. Uh, I'm happy Adam's Adam, Adam, I mean, like, I don't know. We're getting too personal too into stories, but his brother was in Ethiopia and they just got him back home. Oh my gosh, he had that's a hard great. time getting home. Well, yeah, that's really scary. Ugh, that's unfortunate. Oh, Adam says, entertain me now. That's simply no problem. Oh, well, now we're now we're not going. This now this is gonna be a tough hour now. Well, now because yeah. you only think of the negative. Yeah. Oh my god! Although I just said Corona is bringing us together, so I don't know. You're gonna positive. you're gonna die laughing, but I just put um, I was going to my trusty news site people dot com, and immediately uh -huh. WebMD came up. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happening. 
<laughs> I think that's just for anybody now. People go on the net and they're like, oh, you need a WebMD? It's Corona. Yeah, it's just WebMD going, hey, you need me? You need me now? Do you know what I am kind of like freaked out about? Like, uh, not freaked out about, but it's like, what if you get symptoms for like other colds now and that you would have gone to the doctor for like a canker sore or something that you would have gone to the doctor for previously, but now you're like, well, I guess I... I just stay home. Okay, well, I'd like to stop you first because you said going to the doctor for a canker sore. So yeah, I was just trying to think of what I know that you don't actually go for a canker sore. Yeah, you just kind of go. Think of, if you get a canker, aren't you just going? Hey, maybe we'll pump pump the brakes on tomatoes. What? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? <laughs> you love the doctor. You love going to the doctor. No, well, you, you love sussing. I, I you love but sussing. I'm also like a huge procrastinator, so like I love getting the information that I'm okay, but I, I rarely go. See, I thank probably you. go less than I'm supposed to go. Jenny Cirillo's in the chat going, people go to the doctor for canker sores? I don't think so. Welcome to yeah, Jason Ross's life. No, no, no. I, I, it's the first thing that came to mind. If I had a canker sore, I would not go to the doctor. I think you'd think about it. Of course, because I'd be like, what am I dying? <laughs> well, that's the thing, right? Um, okay, so we have a couple of, I have a couple of um, celebrity news stories to run past you. Um, and one of them is Bachelor related. And please, people, don't leave the chat. We're not going to dip on it long. We're not going to stick around with The Bachelor today. No. I love how, like, everyone likes talking about The Bachelor, but now we've become very insecure about us talking about it. Mm hmm Well, it's because Tyler C. from Hannah Brown season and Hannah Brown are now reunited in Florida. And they yeah. are getting Thirsty McThursterson online and um, doing like a million TikToks and living in a house together and just like working out and doing live workouts and just being the thirstiest thirsties. Have you been seeing this? Yeah, and Peter Weber's at home crying about it probably. Actually, um, no, Peter saying, Weber- no, I truly, I love Madison, but- Peter is at home literally doing um, like Peter lip Peter Weber's at home with his Cuban mom. <laughs> An uncoordinated father with a mustache. I can't with it. Well, dancing. This was another Bachelor story, and then we will move on to other celebrity stories, but Peter lost his job. The the airline that he worked for has gone down. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's not funny in a real way because, yes, there's a lot of layoffs going on right now for a lot of people. Yeah. But that this one thing confirms that he actually was a pilot and did have a job at one point is funny enough to me because – I don't think he was really a pilot. But can I just bring up something and I don't, I'm not body shaming or just whatever. We had a pudgy Peter when he showed his past, his past pictures of him working for this airline. He was a bit pudgier. And guess what? Didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. His hey legs. Man, there's nothing wrong with a pudge. There's no, I love a pudge. Nothing wrong with that. It lets me, it lets me release a bit. You know, <laughs> if yeah. you're going, I'm going. That's the rule. Here, here's the thing, because I did see the one hand, um, Hannah Brown and Tyler, uh -huh. even though I didn't watch that season, I saw their headline, and they were there was like they're hanging out on a beach together. But I'm like, the hell is wrong with people still hanging out on beaches and stuff? Well, this is the, this is the thing. I mean, there's that huge, um, there's this huge uh, viral video of like all these teens being like, Corona won't get in between my spring break, and it's like, course, okay, yeah. Jeffers, relax, get out of here. <laughs> where are your parents? Get grounded. The problem is with my life, I, I thought, because uh, I saw that, and I was like, why don't they postpone spring break? And they'll just put it later. And then into my, to my own self, I was like, where are my priorities at where I'm like, not about school or anything else. I'm like, well, they better postpone the important parts of life, like spring break, so we can still have that after we get back to normal. <laughs> you know, when we get back, you know what the kids need? A break. A spring they, break. They need to let loose. I never went, like, we never had a spring Although break. Although I think a lot of these companies down there like in wherever people normally go in florida like fort lauderdale and stuff there's these bars that if they would have jumped on it early they could have done virtual reality rooms and stuff like that so people could have jumped on oculus or whatever or even jumped online and they could have partied from their <sighs> own house and i think that would have been great uh, you have brought up oculus every I don't, I don't own any every episode it's because it's the future i don't like you it's saying coming. Stop saying to be things honest, are coming. To be honest, I think my life, I think we're in like a simulation <laughs> oh right God, now. I think life is a virtual reality simulation for somebody. I think it is. You think everything's a simulation. You keep saying Oculus and you keep going, it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> my nephew um, 
I think it was like two years ago, uh, on Christmas Day, he ran into the room and woke me up and he goes, Auntie Stacy, Santa has been. And it was the creepiest way to say, like, Santa came. He was like, Santa has been. <laughs> um, and that's what you're like with Oculus. You're like, it's coming. I can't with it. I don't want virtual reality. I feel like I would get a headache. I was trying to do my erotic paint by numbers last night and, you know, I, I had to take a break. I can't handle it. Um, can you hear me at all or what's going on with you? I can hear you. My son and my wife have been coming in out of the room collecting toys that they left in here because my office again is my four year old child's room. Flying dirty. Um, <laughs> Oh my God, I pressed that. And then Adam Colley said, Jason is for sure fly and dirty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really curious about the message that was retracted by Jenny Cirillo. Don't That's, call uh, her out. Let it be okay. what it is. <laughs> uh, it's always one of those things. You, you want to know what you can't know. I mean, hello, hello. They're letting you now. Um, Apple has been thinking about adding in this feature where you can remove a text. The only thing is people will see that you've removed it. I still would love the option. But that would probably just be between iPhone to iPhone, right? What? That would probably just be between people. On, like that would be yes, like Yes, Jason, uh, we know you're an Android user. I can't message you on my computer and it's bothersome to me. Yeah, 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 There's yeah, nothing yeah. more frustrating uh, than doing an iMessage. Jen wants to see the progress on the paint by numbers, but. It's, it's way over there, but I will put it up on my Instagram so you can see it it's honestly i was working on it for an hour and i just got one little corner done but let me tell you it it will not beat me it is actually very relaxing i watched the mark Marin stand-up special while i was doing it and it was nice have are, so pay by numbers is they tell you the color are you switching colors up they give you like i have like 30 different pots yeah yeah yeah, for the erotic. I just mean painting. like a paint by numbers is like, oh, they go number one is the blue, so you put the blue there. But like, yeah. are you changing and be like, no, no, no? For me, number one is the uh, orange. Okay, so what you're saying to like, me live is, live on the edge. Am I living on the edge of the most intricate paint by numbers I have ever seen in my entire life? And have I just decided to paint myself? No, I have not. I'm following the rules, which is the basis of a paint by number. <laughs> Of course you go, well, I'll pick my own colors. And at the end, you're like, it doesn't look anything like the original image. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you're going to try to turn it into yourself because Stacey just wants a man with it, with her, with his nose and her thick hair right on her neck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love you, Oculus. <laughs> <laughs> I can't and I shan't. Um, yeah. I will say that the celebrity news is pretty small. I would say a lot of celebrities are um, having babies. So that's about it, really. But um, I am kind of concerned, though, about this um, Hannah Brown and Tyler C thing. It's just like not a good look. It's like we're all staying inside. Get inside. Yeah. Although I guess they're in there too, because someone even wrote in the chat, it's like, well, uh, it's all fun and games until everybody in the beach has, has Corona. Because uh, they, I guess they have a production crew following them around at the same time. Like they do. Oh my god! I, I don't know. I'm, do I'm only they? taking that from like the this quick sentence because I'm like, oh yeah, I guess maybe like they they probably have pretty well produced photos. It's just like all of these reality shows are really putting life on the stage and making money off of like things above and beyond the airtime, right? So it's right. like. Of course, they're following alums that succeeded with the fans, and they're being a like, "Great, now your life is making us revenue." I don't think they're together. I don't think I they're don't together think at all. I like that the red's back. I forgot to mention the red is back. What is? The red lipstick. She's back. I mean, it could be it could be darker, but I always forget to put on like makeup or something before we start recording, and then I have to rush to the bathroom and you know put some. I know. Uh, I was running around too because we were doing a bunch of stuff, and then I realized. I look like a dirt bag, but then I also thought, as this goes on, because I think it's going to go past April 19th, which is when <laughs> LA's on a lockdown pill, <laughs> you're going to be able to go through the progress and see yeah. hair get longer. That's nice. I think I've made a decision um, not to shave. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. I can't grow anything, so it's not like you're going to see a beard on me, but you're going to see Jason? me. Jason? You're going to see what looks like a goatee come nope. in a little bit. We're seeing it now. We're seeing it now. You're so close to your webcam, it's startling to me. 
I have to be. And if you're listening to this as a podcast, please check out youtube.com slash JC McGonagall. We are approaching the weekend. You can catch up and watch the ridiculousness that is what this week has been. Um, it's been great. I still really liked having Kolenko on, um, really dissecting some conspiracy theories. Oh, yeah. We got to get him back Can't on. Can't wait to get that back, and we're going to get some more conspiracy theories going. And we got to get some guests, too. Like, if you have a webcam, like, send them our way. You know, you're not a perf. We'll patch you in. We're not scared. We'll see what's up. Let us know what you want to talk about, and we'll find out. Jan says that she's into the playoff beard, and I'm not sure about it. <laughs> because, Jan, can I tell you this? And I don't want to put Jason down, but a playoff beard implies that there's a sport or activity or general goal that we're working towards. And I don't think Jason's <laughs> deserving currently at this particular moment for this goatee. We are. We're working towards <laughs> something. But I just... If I was on a national hockey team, uh huh, uh, or a national league hockey team, a what? And it was playoff. If, it was, if if I was on like an actual professional team, all my all everybody on there would be laughing at me because this would be week like ten. Totally. And they'd be like, "Okay, cool. We can't win. We can't win the playoffs. Not you me, can't pal. Even grow. Because guess what? I'd be on that team. I'd be your best pal, and I'd be like, "Don't let them talk to you like that." And then when you left, <laughs> I would agree with every single one of their concerns. And I'd be like, "Stacy, your beard's <laughs> thicker than mine. This is the only reason why you're coming Hell, to like." Let me tell you, I'm loud and proud. I turned thirty, and poof, my face exploded. <laughs> and if you don't think I'm shaving my face every week, you're nuts. And every woman will come at me, except for the women who shave their face, because if you know, you know. If you know, you know. And I shave well, my if face. The, if my 13 year old boy rumors were true, if you shave it, it just makes it thicker. It doesn't. I've been doing it since I was well, 30. That's what I heard in grade 13 from I grade can't 13? his name, but grade 13. Yeah, grade 13. I know. No, I, age 13. I'm so bummed that I missed grade 13. Honestly, I wanted to be, what was it called? Oh, yeah, that's a true thing. I was, I think I was one of the last, if not the last no. year to have. Okay, maybe not. No, because but you're I, 10 I years older 13. than me. Like, you're vastly older than me. Generations. Generations wide. Although it doesn't feel a day older. Like, I remember when Debbie Gibson was big. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember going to the mall for the first time. I don't know if that doesn't relate. But um, first of all, just a little beauty PSA. Shaving your face is super great. You should do it. Um, I do it once a week, um, and it helps your skincare absorb. Your makeup sits better, and um, and it's a natural exfoliant. Well, not natural because you're, you know what I mean. You're like shaving it, so it's not like a natural. But um, oh, Jan just said Steph and I just had a long convo about Stacy's porcelain complexion. Thank you. Porcelain Thanks. Shave, shave your I, face. I can't reach it because it's out of, uh, I, like, I'm connected to my to my mic, but uh -huh. I almost want to reach up. Uh, I have a Russian doll in this room that is called Jan because Jan gave it to me, and, and Charlie Charlie plays with Jan, so. That's cute. I'm sure she knows. Jan's the best. <laughs> MVP. MVP. So do you have any um, dumb stories or anything that's going on with you currently? I have dumb stories, and here's the sad part about it. When you go to a, a lot of my sources, what I'm like, go to these sites to find dumb stories. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a lot of them are about Corona now, and they've even started becoming less dumb because it's very, very real. So what I'm getting at is I'm digging up some that are maybe a little older, like a month Oh, that's okay. I don't think that I'm, we care. I'm going into my stash of what still goes on in this crazy world, maybe before Corona. <laughs> but here it is. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Hold on. I made something for you. Okay. Whoa, a banner. Let's get into dumb stories. Where's this banner? You have to watch the stream. I'm watching the stream. You know what? On the YouTube channel, it's always a bit delayed for me about, by about 30 seconds. So yeah, it's so you'll get it. Pop up. You'll get it. I'm a little bright today. I needed to check my camera. So you guys can already see this banner? Yeah, absolutely. Killer. So we're going to get into some dumb stories. Um, so what are they? Uh, let's start with this one because this is, I think, hilarious. Mm -hmm. um, because people, um, in general, okay. and I'm definitely one. I'm people. Uh, maybe just read headlines, or they don't really dive into the research of things, or whatever else. And this really speaks to that uh, because the Brazilian uh, Tourist Board, mm -hmm. um, their National Tourism Board, has an Instagram account, as most would, and they put up this picture. They they reposted something from someone where the post is such a beautiful city and they threw it up on their national tour board website but if you read the story that it's attached to 
uh, but beautiful is not enough. My family and I were robbed, but my <laughs> nine-year-old sister, sister witnessed a violent robbery. What? I can't recommend a visit to a city where I felt afraid for even leaving my apartment. And this is what they put up on their national tourism Instagram account. Wait, they put up... Wait, what? So It's a photo of the island, and it looks beautiful. And then the, the first thing they wrote was... Um, What's the what's the sentence? Rio is such a beautiful city, but that's as far as the national tourism national tourism board wrote before they reposted it on their site, and then it continued on. But beauty is not enough. My family and I were robbed, and my nine year old sister witnessed a violent robbery. I can't recommend a visit to a city where I Wait, felt afraid okay. for even leaving my apartment. No, I got that part. So basically, they put up Rio put up a photo being like, "Come to Rio," and then the first comment below that is like, "We just got robbed." Not, no, not the first comment. No, 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 no. They reposted the picture where in the picture there's this statement, but they didn't read the statement except oh. for the very first like eight I, words of the thing. I see. And they're like, oh, yeah, it is beautiful. Sorry. Just throw that up there. So someone put up a beautiful photo of Rio and said, yes, it's a beautiful city. However, we were violently robbed. And then Rio was we like, were terrified let's... the entire And then Rio time. was like, let's get this on our thing. <laughs> Maybe that's their tourism board. They're like, yeah, man, this is good. This is good this stuff. Hey, we want to get them in, but we don't want to lie to them. You know what I mean? <laughs> can I just tell you what I'm sorry? Can I just tell you what I just saw? I'm sorry. I have of to course. stop everything. So I work in front of a window. So I just saw a man. Okay. I'm going to call him a loser. Let his dog take a massive shit in front of my house. I can't. Take up the poo and throw it in the recycling. He just made eye contact with me and threw it not even in the garbage. Or the compost, he threw it in the recycling. What's happening? Okay. <laughs> We're literally similar lives because you know when I told you that story about earlier when I went out my door and was standing at my door? Do you know what the purpose of that was? Why? In my kitchen, it looks onto that. So I saw a guy out there with his dog. But people are just, they don't pick up after their dogs in front of my house. And I have a little boy running out of the house. So I always go out there just to be like, hmm. What's going on over here? Did he You're let his dog take up, a shit right? in front of your house? He didn't. The dog didn't. But I. But that's why I went and stood out there because I was this guy was out. There. It wasn't uh, for both. I wanted to go outside, but also that was like, well, there's a guy out there with the dog. I and cannot. I've just become in the habit of like being like get out there because every time we run out the front door who and the... there's a bunch of dog crap in front of our house. Who the hell is that man? <laughs> I have half a nerve. <laughs> Let's get this on camera. Grab your camera. Go. I would. I would. And guess what, guys? He was wearing a freaking no fear sweater. Kelsu, not Supreze. <laughs> Kelsu, not Supreze. <laughs> got my no fear sweater on, my, my oh. Ed Hardy underwear. I yeah. got a tad that says Ed Hardy on my shoulder, wear my heart on my sleeve. I got a freaking girlfriend named Crystal, and it is complicated from top to bottom. Oh. <laughs> Her husband hates me. <laughs> Oh, wait, hold on one second. Hold on one second. My dog's taking a dump. Uh, let's recycle this. Yeah. Uh. Just interrupting me playing poker on my phone. <laughs> I'm going to hit a big one day. You just got to, you know. Oh, Adam wants to know what I'm drinking. So, Adam, I am drinking. And also, let me know if this is disgusting to look at because when I watch people drink Caesars at some point, I'm like, ugh, it's a Caesar. It's a Caesar. Caesars are great. Caesar is so good. For the Americans that don't know what a Caesar is, it's. A Bloody Mary, but like good. Mm. It's a. It's um okay. This is not to. Sorry, I really derailed the dumb stories because literally I can't believe that happened. And he he looked at me. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Did he look at you like this, like just stare at you and go. Yeah, and he and flung it in, it and he flung thing. it in the recycling bin. Contact. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I respect that man a little. No, you don't. <laughs> he had a little dog, too. Stupid. Well, then it's a little poo. I don't care. It's the principle. I always pick up my poo. Always. Until I, Thank it, you. Unless I don't have a bag, and then, you know, I panic, and then I try and cover it, and then I run back. And I always get a bag and run back if it's around my neighborhood. Always will. I believe that to a point. What do you mean? 
I believe there's been a time when you ran back with the intent to get a bag and then you got home and you're like, oh, what's this? Oh, yeah. What was that? A sexy man waiting at the door who was obsessed with me and my complicated (laughs) relationship with my body. I wanted to explore that in a really wonderful, sensual way. And I was like, well, I was supposed to go pick up poo, but I guess I'll just see what you're about, stranger. And then he built me an amazing shelf and put the two books that I own on top of it. And then we consummated our beautiful relationship. You almost (laughs) consummated until you dropped your robe and it was porcelain skin, but you you only had the body parts of a Barbie doll, so that you were in trouble. And I was like, "Don't touch me. Order pizza." <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Jan. Oh my God, Jan. Okay, so if everyone's in the chat, people listening, <laughs> I just saw what she. Put. So one of my favorite blackouts at Second City was one that never made the show, and it was Jan and our lovely friend Craig. And um, it starts with like Craig walking a dog, and then Jan comes in and goes, "Hey, man, pick up your dog shit." And then Craig goes, "That's not the dogs." Hi, I'm Brian. (laughs) Funniest. It just was like truly the funniest thing I've ever heard. I still think about it all the time. It was just the funniest. Uh, Okay, sorry. Do you have any more dumb stories? I'm now calmed down. No, this is great. I mean, like we're, we started them early, so this is great. We can, we can go on tangents. It's not like we ever <sighs> stay on track with anything. I just feel like I feel like this is what your 30s are now. I'd like to know what your 40s feel like, Jay. But like 30s is like now I argue things out of principle. I'm like, no, that's wrong. Out of principle that I'm upset. In 40s, it's the same thing, except your principles are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Would you ever want to go back and be 20 again? I know the answer is yeah. yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of yeah, course. but you know what? I want to go back to be everything again. I would go back to my teens. I'd go back to my 20s. I'd go back you'd to my go, 30s. You go back to your teens? What would you change in your teens? Fuck. I wouldn't change anything. I would live them all over again. and be like, I, I know what's happening <laughs> next, but I'm all right. Like, I hate watching movies and being like, oh, I could figure this out. But with my teens, I'd be like, I know what's coming. This is going to be fucking would you still run weird. around? Would you still run around naked with your best friend making out with your girlfriend in the car? You gotta, you gotta have self uh, building sort of. You have to have character building experiences. Would you be running around the field? Jason got tr- played truth or dare, and then his girlfriend and best friend dared him to run around a field naked, and then he did that while they made out in a car. <laughs> but would you run? He ar- still denies that to this day. So yeah, I should well, maybe drop the story. But like, it was pretty obvious from my tears that he was making out with. <laughs> it was clear from my tears. <laughs> <laughs> if you could go back would you be running around the field going i know what you're doing i know what's happening in there <laughs> by the way it was also like if you love me let me go and it had like lights on or whatever so it was just like dark out with lights on and this guy running around a soccer field they lit happening. you they had the front lights on well, they didn't light me just the lights were on in this park <laughs> Anybody looking out their suburban window at that time, it was just empty except for one naked crying man running around Uh, a soccer field. Jason, I deeply, I deeply understand your sadness. (laughs) It wasn't, but this whole thing, you'd ask me if I do it again, I'd be like, I think so. I know, but the thing that's so funny to me being friends with you is I'm like, I think you're sad. And you're like, no way, baby. I'm going to live forever. (laughs) I'm cherishing every moment. I'm feeling every feel. And I'm like, I don't know, man. It seems like you're deeply sad and you're like whatever it's a feeling and i'm feeling it (laughs) isn't it great to be alive (laughs) stay vulnerable (laughs) never that's our rule of life once those walls come down you become the fool (laughs) uh adam wants to know what your 50s are really like Whoa! Where's what? where's his do 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 do? Like this guy has jumped into uh, dad jokes before. Oh yeah, because he, he's not even he's he's a young thirty year old. What? Adam Colley. Oh, he's a young thirty year old. I don't think so. <laughs> not to age shame anyone, but I don't think anyone's a young thirty year old anymore. Anyways, Adam Colley's a. Uh, we've had him on before uh, talking to him. You can see he's a very put together man. Such a put together guy. Oh my god. The second I was like, stay in your house, I was like, goodbye bras. And I'll tell you, I caught a glimpse of what my gals are doing and they, well, they're not up. I'll tell you that. They're not up. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> not up. Okay, based on my breasts, uh, what's the next dumb story? I want to. I'm going to do this one, which I don't know if there's a lot of funny to it, but it really speaks to us. I think. Oh wow! Okay. Uh, and you so you might have even heard about it before, but did you know that there was a Japanese billionaire? I say it because I think there's a bachelor sort of tone to this, but it was a Japanese billionaire who put out a public search for a girlfriend. Oh. Uh, and he attracted 30,000 applicants. No, what were his requirements? They need to join him on a trip to space uh, on Elon Musk's SpaceX. Oh. They would have been a voyage to space. Right. Okay. And then he canceled it. Uh, he eventually canceled it. Oh, my God. And people were like, I want to go to space. That sounds amazing. I love that. This guy was going to be the first private passenger on a voyage offered by Elon Musk's SpaceX. His search for his soulmate was due to be turned into a TV show. Of course. For a web streaming service. Oh, my God. Only on web? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Not even full broadcast? (laughs) Oh my god! But it's kind of crazy, right? Like that's. I don't um, want to go to space. Be, if the next Bachelor came out and been like, "Great, it, it's not about getting married. It's like we're gonna shoot you off into space together." That's... Or the next like Love Is Blind, they're just talking in pods, but then they find out they're on actual pods that are being shot into space, and it's oh well, you better find love. I feel like that's more commitment than a TV marriage. It definitely is because you got to like you're going to be up there for a long time and there's no getting off, man. It's kind of like us all with coronavirus right now. Our houses are all spaceships and we're kind of stuck on them for a bit. Okay, you need to go for a walk because you're absolutely nuts. I can't. I'm in space. (laughs) Claire says being trapped in space with some stranger dude sounds like a nightmare. And I agree. And because this is why I would go into space and the guy that I'd be linked to would have a guitar. He'd want to like sing to me. I'd be upset about it. I can't. Especially because the one quality puts out there is like, I'm a billionaire. I got tons of cash. And that's what I imagine these applicants are like, great. He's a sort of attractive man because he's an older gentleman, it looks like. But like, hell yeah, man, I'm going to be married to a billionaire. Oh my God, classic. your currency's no good in space. So. (laughs) Also, he's old. Yeah, but maybe the women are applying were old, or maybe they don't care about age. Oh, yeah, you're, I bet you a lot of the women that were applying were old. <laughs> um, Jenny Sorello says, we're really living in the circle right now, and it certainly feels like that. That is true. So many Google Hangouts, so many Zoom Hangouts. I feel like Zoom stock has just, like, risen, because everyone's on Zoom, having Zoom chats. And there's other people, there's other people in the chat being like, nope, I wouldn't do it either. So there's, there's people that are like, I wouldn't, against the SpaceX thing. I think I would thing. do it. I wouldn't do it, but you know what I would do? I would do Love is Blind. I think that's the only reality show that I'm like, oh, I like that. I like the concept of that. <laughs> um, I feel like second season. Where would your mind be at though when they're like, hey guys, it's been a week and now the next stage is about to begin. If you're not proposed to, you don't move on in the show. Well, here's Where the would Stacey be at? Okay. So did I connect with someone? I mean, like you got to make you're gonna propose to this person. Okay, no, you're no. connected. You, Answer you found my question. A, you found one. I'll say this: you found one dude that says he can build a shelf. Okay. Uh, and you're connecting him on um, a level where he's just like, you know, he's a bit funny and he likes a pizza. A bit funny. A bit funny. This guy's not knocking your socks off, <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. But the show's like, if you don't do this now, no. But I'm saying, th- okay, I'm saying if I had a connection like like Cameron and Lauren or Amber and Barnett, um, even if I had a connection like Kelly and Kenny, like at the moment of like, oh, we're friends, we're joking, we're having a good time. Okay. Um, I would, of course, get proposed to because then you could see them and then you could go to Mexico. Like, I think a lot of them were like, yeah, I'll just say yes so that we can go to the vacation. Like, it's still a show. You know, I could still back out at any point if I, like, open the door and it's someone I'm not, like, loving. You only run in the chance of becoming a Jessica, and that's the worst part. A hundred percent. But my issue with Jessica was that she just wasn't honest. And she got boozy. At any point. At any point. But the problem with Love is Blind. And it was all very transparent. Totally. And this is my problem with Love is Blind, the seasons that it will proceed now, is like how genuine is everyone? The first season of a reality show is always the most pure. It's the same thing with The Circle. Like The Circle is going to be the same because the reason why I like that is because I don't think people actually knew what that was and they threw them rules like throughout it. So there was nobody strategizing and like playing games. Totally. 
but the, it was like for the most part it was pretty real yeah i agree so many people in the chat are like i would do love is blind and it's like because it, it is sort of an interesting thing where you have to sit and talk and listen because so many issues i have we should ha play the circle we are playing the circle no but we should do it where we don't we will all put up fake icons and make up characters and no. then we'll talk to each other okay that's, that's already called idea. our public profiles <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, what? You uh I lost you for a second. What'd you say? You lost me in the bubbles? I lost you in the bubbles. No, I I'm gonna be done this whole bottle and then I've gotta go talk to my kids' class. So I'm jealous. I'm just sucking on this little Caesar here. But Although I'm not a bad father. Uh, no, 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 God, you're fine. Um no, I think I would do Love is Blind for sure. I Am think I, I the last person in the world that hasn't watched Love is Blind? That's Maybe. from our feed. You might be. You might be. You got to get on it. You have the time. Because the thing is when... Um, it's when not I, as great as everyone's saying. It's a good show, but it's not as great as everybody's saying. I disagree. I, I mean, I caught it before the hype, so I could enjoy it without people going, isn't it amazing? Like, isn't it so amazing? Like, I got to watch it, and I was like, okay. I'm telling you from the point of view, I caught it after the hype. It's yeah. just another reality yep, show. Yeah, but that's classic, Jay. I say it's not... A, I don't think it's like regular reality shows. I actually think it's very different. <clears throat> Although Lauren and Cameron are getting super thirsty online and I can't judge them because I'm thirsty too, but they're on one. Lauren and Cameron was the Terminator, right? Yeah. The guy with the, like, yeah. the, a straight spine that just is a robot probably. Yeah, and he's, he's always finding Lauren in the kitchen and like softly holding her waist and she doesn't seem to be bothered by that, which really, he just, it just sits it's with It's beautiful. Me. No, I don't want to be softly <laughs> touched on the waist. Nor do you. We had to do it. Okay, Jason and I had to do a, a sketch, and we talk about it all the time. It's um, on our, um, it's on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Stacey McGonagall. It's called, um, what did we call it? One are afternoon. Are you talking about come to bed? Or are you no, talking one about... afternoon. Oh, one afternoon. So, one afternoon, Jason and I had to kiss, and he had to touch my waist, and we've never talked about it since. We can't. It, it was. We didn't talk about it then. No, we couldn't talk about it then. Oh my God, we couldn't talk about it then. We both had to touch each other's waist, and we weren't having it. I remember that. We also said we yeah, were at it, peak it's weight. It's probably the least well acted love scene of all time. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to see two dented cans roll their mouths on each other. <laughs> it's like if they, they did a romantic movie with John and Joan Cusack and they're like, great, this is a notebook with John and Joan Cusack. First of all, Go. it's Cusack and I don't like how you're saying John and Joan. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'm just, I was just trying to think of a brother and sister that uh, would have to do a romantic movie together and be like go yeah Joan Q's like so sick I love her uh, yeah but you know what I was to go back into love is blind I would say what's interesting to me is what I liked about it and what I think people should watch if you haven't I feel like everyone has except for a few people in our thread but maybe people listening haven't but like I think it's important no spoilers I'm not, but it's important to like put yourself fully out there. Like when I was on um, Hinge, when I was hinging, um, uh, my friends would get mad because my interactions with people would be like how I would speak normally. And they're like, you're being too much. You're being too whatever. And I'm like, okay, but if you meet me for one second, like there's no denying like who I am as a person. I'm not being rude to that person, but this is how I would uh respond. So if you're not having it, then get out of yeah. here immediately, you know? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I think I was one of the people that said that to you. I'm like, yeah, but like you're going to put out these pictures and then they're going to meet you and be like, where's this put together person? You're like, I, have a, I don't know. I'm a puzzle. I fall apart. <laughs> I'm a pu Hi, I'm Stacy. I'm a comedian and I'm a puzzle. So I fall apart. <laughs> Fix I'm me. missing a piece. <laughs> Many. <laughs> many many the many of them involve reading <laughs> anyways do you have another dumb story uh i do but i'll uh snake king who's been following us all week very nicely oh yeah uh, just finished love is blind last night he also he or she also hates when um when couples are like touching and you're trying to talk to them like pdas that are just way too much oh while you're literally in a conversation with them i cannot with okay i how do you stand on PDA? Because I don't mind it. I like a handhold. I like, yeah, you know, I maybe a little, mind it, an occasional like, smooch, a rub on the back. Those things are nice. I don't need yeah. you to be on me. I, 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 I don't do it. And um, 
I don't. <laughs> no, but you don't. I don't you, know why. But you know what like you do? A, that's really it is nice. So weird to be. But I, I will say this. You might not do PDA, but the one thing that you do that is just like so lovely is if you're walking with Jason, he has to walk on the side of the road. I don't know if that's like an OCD thing for you. It's not an OCD thing. It's like um, I, it was just in the polite vocab, like etiquette thing for a while. I'm trying not to do it. It's not that I'm not trying to do it as much anymore, but I'm trying to be less OCD about it in my life because it's always pointed out as like, why do you do that? Well, because okay. you have to do it. Like at any at any and all costs. Like there were times time, yeah. where I'd be walking with you and then you'd be like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> that guy's back. <laughs> the, sorry, the poo guy is back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is this for real happening? Oh, I'm faking it. I'm looking at a fake person. He must live down the street. He's enemy, <laughs> he's enemy number one. <laughs> I got lost again because my wife came in at a friend. You remember that old CNN clip with the kid runs in and then the other lady runs in <laughs> after him? My wife just did that, but without the kid. <laughs> okay. Well, I the weekend is upon us. Some stuff that he probably needs out there. She's just like, I, I got to. Okay, so let's get into dumb stories. Okay. Oh, you need another dumb story. Let's find well, one more. Well, I just thought Here's we're kind of coming to um, the end, so. <clears throat> what's that? Um, no, I'm not trying to rush you. First of all, Shauna says couples who sit on the same side of the booth, I simply and utterly, I simply and utterly cannot. Yeah. I don't like boothers. Um, but people think that what oh, you do is really cute. I, I actually, like, I'm following the next comment, and I'm, I'm into it. Uh, no, those are cute manners, and my dad will always do that with my mom. Look, I, I think there's a difference in like maybe there's something because when I see if I saw like an older couple doing that, I would be like, how cute, still, how amazing. I think it's Not nice. I, I don't think yeah. I've never had a problem with it. I always thought it was really kind. And Jenny was saying that um, uh, Jenny says her mom always said she walked on the outside so she could push me out of the way if a car was coming. I mean, hello. That's the goal. It's like you, if the, it's it's the realistic thing is more like if it's raining out and it splashes water at you. And where it actually started was apparently, okay. and I could have this wrong, this could all be broken telephone, but way, way back when there was like awnings on the side of the street and stuff like that, and people would literally toss their sewage out the window. Sewage? So that the, it's, it's true. Like it's, that's apparently where it started, where it was like, then the woman, uh, your, your partner, um, and I guess a lot of these lords are in same sex couple sort of things because it's way back centuries ago. That's how they talk. Uh, but like, it was like okay. they would be on the inside under the awning and then you would be the one taking the brunt of any gross stuff that would come Poo -poo. down. And Poo -poo. now it's, but now for me, it's like if a car drives by and splashes water or whatever else. So I do it with my son because I'm like. Suck, nah. squeeze, bang, blow. Gentlemen. Yeah. Gentlemen alert. That's nice. It's just nice. Yeah. Anyone can practice yeah, that. It's just it's just kind. It's nice to be taken care of in subtle ways, and I think that um, sometimes that goes out the window. And I and I appreciate it. I like someone holding my bag because I'm lazy. I enjoy that. That doesn't mean I can't carry it. I don't want to. So. Oh, that. I don't know if I've ever been that guy, and not because I'm like against it. I just don't know if. Oh, I've not my had, purse, like, but if I had like hold my purse or hold my bag. But or if anything. I don't we were dating happened. and I came outside and I had like two backpacks you wouldn't take one mm, that's different i thought you meant like hold my purse or no whatever. why do i need you to hold my purse what what do you need to look in there for yeah backpacks and bags like yeah that, that's different of course yeah that's just get yeah <laughs> okay last final story i gotta pick between these two well, hmm, we, we, could do, we could do we could do two we have time for two no these two are both like i'm not excited about either of them so here we this go this is amazing uh, i love this I'll final dumb this story is, um so a Russian soldier rolls out tanks for a romantic maneuver is the headline. And what it is, is a Russian soldier literally had 16 tanks surround a couple, surround him and his, his mate uh -huh. uh, in a heart shape. Uh, wow. This is, a, it. this is a real lover's vibe for yeah. Friday. I guess everyone's all boned up and ready to like bone through the weekend. I'm bubbled in. It's Friday. I'm I tomatoed in. Flowing. I'm clam juiced. Right. Oh, that's so gross. <laughs> I take it back. That's disgusting. Um, forget it. But uh, I, Jameson said, I always heard sitting across from the person was what you do so you can look at each other fully because of love. Wow. Boring. <laughs> 
Um, or sometimes you need to look them in I the eye. I see what you say, Yeah, 100%. No, so totally. You look in each other's eyes. You have full attention with each other. And you then, can stop texting. And that's when you say, I think we're done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's Valentine's Day. I got something to say to you. I got something to say to you. I got something to say to Wait, wait, wait. I have something to say to you. One. What? <laughs> two. Three. three. We're done. I love you. Oh, my God. So we're on the same uh, page. Uh-oh. You love me enough <laughs> to let me go. <laughs> that's so funny if it was a, if it was a sketch about uh, i'm breaking up with you you're saying i love you but we both got each other mariachi bands <laughs> like all the different things to celebrate <laughs> the different things <laughs> competing mariachi bands one singing a song of breakup and the other one being like amore <laughs> amore <laughs> you know what's really I crazy to me i I mean, obviously we're performers or whatever, but I am naturally like quite shy. So when people like grand, like oh, yeah. grand displays of love, it makes me so uncomfortable. Like when people love like a mariachi band or if people love like a violinist coming to the table or if like people do public like engagements, like not judging it, it's just not for me, but truly I want to disappear. I would like to be erased from the situation. What? I'm having a brain fart so bad. What is it called? What, oh, so if you're proposing to Stacey, don't do a big flash mob. Of oh. Like, <laughs> Times Square turns into a song and dance. We would be done. <laughs> we would be done. <laughs> you know, I had friends take me out for my birthday and they sang me happy birthday and it was just kind that they had taken me out. But I was, I was like, please, no. It's so. It's if you've ever seen The Matrix, because we'll go back to The Matrix. I've I hate this. I know I, you do. Ugh, I've never even seen The Matrix. I always fall asleep. My brain goes, "This is not for you." Well, you know the bad guy in the trench coat and the glasses that gets cloned, and there's like a billion of them. Keanu. No, no, no. Yeah, although he does that too. But there's the bad guy. I can't remember his name, and I'm not a big Matrix fan, to be honest. Even though I talk about it, you talk uh, about but it. But there's one a part lot. where like all of them come in in like a circle <laughs> and they attack Keanu, and he beats. He's like takes them all out. <laughs> That's, That's me. A flash mob. while Stacy gets proposed to. <laughs> if I. They do that camera that goes around you 360, and you're in the air kicking one of them in the face. All of them. All of them. <laughs> All of them. I can't. A public, like, we used to have to do public engagements at Second City, and Jason can attest. I would throw a fit. I would be upset about it. There was one that it. we were, like, actually blown away by because there was, like. No, I wasn't in that cast. You always talk about that one. but Oh, it was beautiful. They put it in the paper the next day. It was so beautiful. Okay, but it's, I can't. I, I just, I don't want it. I don't want to be a part it, of it. The truth is you watched it, and you're like, I'll tell you this from like, so at Second City, like Stacy said, during the improv set, what would happen is we would call one of the people up on stage. Uh, we'd end up calling a couple up on stage. And then we had this sort of like beat it out scene that would get end up in a proposal, a real one. And that the one person obviously didn't know what was happening, but the other person worked with us to set it up. But you could tell how those marriages are going to be six years from now by how the proposals went. Oh yeah, there was one. You. There was one where one girl was like, for sure, not into it. Her ring was huge, though, and um, I remember. Is this the bro one? No, and so she got proposed to, and then the thing about it was like they get proposed to, and then they have to sit down, and then we have to Im improvise, and you would just see the woman like staring and like having her ring, and they would bring them champagne. Um, cheers. Cheers. And uh, it was just so uncomfortable. But I remember her being like, what's happening? Well, there was one. So what happens is they sit on opposite side of the stage. They're kind of divided up by genders. You're, you're putting that at this party where the girls go to one room and they start talking. And the guys take the guys to the other room and they start talking. But then the guy that's there stands up to propose and walks over and they do this big thing. But there was one guy that got up and he was just being like um, a spring break dick the entire time. And we're like, okay, this is wonderful. And then he mm -hmm. stood up and he goes, yo, bro. And his friends stood up in the crowd and threw him the ring. And he was like, 
yeah like it was Ew. it was so about him being a bro and then he got down on one knee and she said yes and everything but i was like well they're gonna be their kids are gonna be in hockey in six years and and There's they're gonna be living that. in the suburbs and hating their lives oh. I, I don't know like but yeah. the one couple that we saw it was it was it was um, a guy asking another guy to marry him and you could f- honestly feel the love on like everybody in the whole there was tears yes, in the nice. eyes of people that didn't even know I, these people i'm just saying would you want to publicly propose well i didn't right but, but w- would you have if i was a better planner I would like to think of something you like, funny. You do like large displays of romance. I think it would be very fun to do it very funny. I mean, like, I don't plan on doing it again, but if I actually took my picture, maybe, maybe I should have been a bit more what? fun with it. Oh of, co- oh, of course, Jason, already married with a child in a happy marriage, going, oh, maybe I should go, maybe I should have done it differently. It all worked out. I'm just saying that, like, <laughs> I don't know. It just makes me... Here's the thing. I'll say this. So... Just to get into my proposal a little bit, but like, yeah, um, I had Jenny out on like a balcony that over we we were in an Airbnb in Los Angeles, mm-hmm. uh, and she was out on a balcony, and I was like, I had made her some breakfast and like put whatever, like it wasn't a grand gesture of anything, but like I had, I built all this up, and then I was gonna take a picture of it with the ring on the the plate I was bringing it out to her, the the tray, and Instagram and be like, will she or won't she? And I didn't do, I saw your face and this is exactly uh, what Jenny said, but I was like, and then I, and then I did it and everything was fine. And she's like, we should call our parents. And I was like, this is what I was going to do. And she was like, hell no. Okay. Hell no. You were going to tell other people about our proposal before we even called our parents. And I was like, is it, does it matter? Does it I'm matter? not bothered by that. Thank you. Okay, good. No. I was like, who cares? They're not my we're best all friends. We're going to find out today. Yeah. So in that sense, I guess I was trying to do it publicly before. Anyways. You're you're one of the first. You're one of the first members of the circle. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just want to say before we conclude, um, Elizabeth and Courtney are talking in the chat about how they want to. They're going to Facetime later because uh, Courtney um messed up and missed the feed. But you can always rewatch. You can always go back, Courtney, and just catch up. Um, but I guess like they're pals, and and now they're coordinating another Facetime because apparently they Facetimed way too late last night. I'm loving this. A little community it. being built. I'm into it. Because I don't know who Nate is, but he was pissed this morning. Nate yeah. was pissed. We don't know who Nate is, but Nate, don't be pissed. We're in a crazy this is, time. This is reality TV, but real. But real. This is great. I'm invested. Um, Jason, so what do you think of the images just before we, we go? Do we like the It's Friday image? Days Gone Weird? I love it. Thank you. Um so do you have anything else before we conclude? I love that this became like a lover's, a lover's Friday. I do too. And, and to, to, um, Jameson's point of like, no more takes, uh, I didn't really finish that story, but like she did, I will just say this, the, there was camera crews there and everything else. Uh, uh-huh. it was a platoon commander named Kazentis. I, I don't care about the name. Uh, but he did, she did say yes silently. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And they 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 got married. Oh my so God! Courtney and Elizabeth have been friends since fourth grade. What's that? Yes. So my son's here. I guess that means time's up. Time is up. So um, so Tasha has asked, "Are you guys doing this next week?" What's that? He sounds so. He's cute. Got I can't even. No, it's okay. Um. Oh, so, okay, let me just give a a little rundown for people on the pod who are not in the chat, which I highly recommend you join us next week, Um, youtube.com slash Stacey McGonigal. Um, But Elizabeth and Courtney have been friends since fourth grade. And then Elizabeth got her into regulars. So this is just the nicest little thing on a Friday that I could ever even possibly know. Um, Okay, so, friends, um, we are going to be back Monday, 1230. Um... Oh, Amanda says she was a great company while I'm painting my bathroom during this quarantine. Woo! Love being it. But if you paint something, don't you have to stay out of that room for a while? Now you can't go into your bathroom for a bit. No, just let her be in the bathroom. She's fine. What, what else I can she it. do? So, uh, okay, guys. So we are going to be back to uh, Monday, 1230 Eastern Standard Time. Let us know if that time is working for you. It works for us, but we're... You know, we're building this thing. But 1230 feels right to me. But let me know what you all think. Um, 
And uh, we will be back on Monday, youtube.com slash Stacey McGonigal. We will be back chatting dumb stories, pop culture. Again, like we said, if you have advice you want from us to Dented Cans, please send it our way. You can message us through our website, theregularspod.com, or on Instagram. You can DM us, no pervs, and uh, follow us on Instagram because we'll be doing stuff on there too. Is there anything else, Jason? Well, yeah, because if you didn't get to listen, there was people like, I can't listen to it live. Remember, you can watch us on YouTube after. You can also, Stacy's still putting these up as podcasts. Uh, so you don't, yes. even have, if you don't want to see our, our silly, melted Ken and Barbie faces, you can just listen to us. Oh my God, silly, melted Ken and Barbie faces. We love, we love. Uh, but yeah, they. Uh, I have been um, updating. The second these live streams are done, I upload the audio so you can have a podcast as well. So thank you to those who've been listening to the podcast. We will see you all next week. Wash your hands, be safe, and have a lovely weekend. Cheers. And cheers, have a lovely Friday. Tell the people you love you love them because that's just nice. And don't get engaged in a big public way. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>